Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Now today I thought I'd do another get ready with me and um, this evening I'm going to my boyfriend's auntie's handy which I'm very excited about. So I thought I'd do a get ready with me. Um, I'm going to do something really pink because I'm wearing a pink blazer. Um, but before we go in with that let's start off with the Smashbox Prime Oil. I'm so incredibly gutted that you can't get Smashbox in the UK right now because this stuff is incredible. Um, if you've got dry skin and you can get hold of it, give it a try because it is really, really life changing. It just means that I can wear any foundation, which tonight I'm gonna wear a slightly more satin foundation, um, purely because um, obviously we're gonna be out for a while. So we're all primed. I'm just gonna prime my eyes with NARS um, Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. This is probably my favourite eyeshadow base. Um, I've got super oily eyelids. Very strange, very dry skin, very oily eyelids. Um, and this is the one of the very few products that will keep my eyeshadow on. For eyeshadows, I'm going to go in with my Glam Shop eyeshadows. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to leave all the eyeshadows I used in the description box because some of these um, have the names in English on them and some of them, the names are only in Polish. So, obviously, I can't speak Polish. I'm not going to, I'm not going to even try because there's a whole lot of letters. Um, so, I'm going to just leave everything, all the shadows that I use in the description box. So I'm going to go in with a nice big fluffy blending brush and I'm just going to take this pink here, which again, we'll leave the name in the description box. I'm just going to buff that through my crease as my transition shade. It's very like light on the pigment, but it's just a nice shade to buff everything else into. Then I'm going to go in, I'm going to hit myself in the face first, and then I'm going to go in with this like pinky coral shade um, on a slightly um, smaller, more tapered blending brush. I'm going to buff that again into the crease. Um, so we're going to Bongo's window tonight, which I've never been to before, and I'm incredibly excited for. Um, I've got a couple of people, I know a couple of people who've been, and they're like, it's really so much fun. I've seen all the TikToks on it, so I'm very excited. I feel like we're going to have an absolute blast. Um, so we're just buffing that on in, and then I'm going to take the previous brush and go back in with that baby pink and just buff out the edges, making sure everything's really like smoky and blended. I absolutely love this color shade. It almost comes out like slightly neon. I'm just going to deepen up now. I'm going to use the red shade, which is this bright red here. And I'm just going to buff that into my crease on a really, really tiny brush. The one thing I will say about Glam Shop shadows is they do have quite a bit of kick up. Um, so they're definitely shadows you want to use before you do your face, just in case. Um, but they are really gorgeous shadows. 
really easy to use, really beautiful and pigmented, and I feel like they're a massively underrated indie brand. Um, and they're super affordable as well. I think the shadows are like something mad, like four euros, um, and you get free shipping to the UK because obviously it's in Europe. Um, so yeah, they are a very very underrated indie brand in my eyes. I do want to try more stuff from them. I know they've just released a cream bronzer, which I really like the look of. Um, so I do think I will possibly be making a cheeky little order sometime soon. So as you can see, that, that red just blends beautifully into the coral. And then I am just going to go back in with the baby pink and go right over the top of it, making sure it's really, really blended. For the eyeshadow, it's all about layering. Um, it's about taking your time. I see some of these people that sort of just whack it all and it looks gorgeous. I'm not that kind of person. I need to be a bit finickety with it and go back in multiple times with multiple layers to make sure everything's the way I want it. Now I'm going to take that red mixed with a little bit of the coral on that small brush again. This is a uniform cosmetics brush and I'm just going to take that on the outer corner. And then I am just going to go back in with the red on its own and just deepen that up. Like I said, into the red, into the coral. I don't know whether you can see the fallout on my cheek here, but this is what I mean. They are pretty um, loosely pressed, so there is quite a bit of fallout, but it's so worth it. I have to clean up the fallout to get this beautiful pale. And then, once again, we're gonna go in with that pink. I'm gonna make sure that the outer corner is also really nicely blended into the skin. And I just get white and let that fall out of me. There we go. Right, I am gonna cut the crease today. I'm gonna use P. Louise Bruma Zero um, because it's just the best for cutting the crease, basically. Um, I'm gonna cut it with this little um, flat brush. I don't even know where this is from, to be honest with you. Um, but it's just a really nice little flat brush. So when I want to be a little bit more precise, I like this one. And I'm just gonna cut that crease. I always cut my crease. So I'll go into the inner corner, across the lash line. And then I always do just slightly open my eye just so I can get that first little bit down so I can sort of follow and sketch out that line. I'm not gonna lie, now I've got this uh, white base on it, it's giving me clown vibes, but um be all okay when we put the shimmer on. Okay, so that is the crease cut. I am just going to give this brush a wipe. So it's got no base left on it. Um, and then I'm going to go in with this beautiful um, rose gold, really chunky glitter shade um, on the inner corner. And then I'm going to go in with this more like deeper pinky red on the middle bit of the eyelid. These glitter shades are stunning, especially over a turkey body. And sometimes just give them with the brush and go in with the finger. Because sometimes you just need, need a little bit of extra oomph. I'd love to know if you, any of you have ever tried those um, like silicon shimmer applicators because they do really intrigue me. And obviously, having acrylic nails is not the easiest thing to um, get like any shimmer in your inner corner. 
I do tend to go in with the brush at the inner corner and then try and sort of pack on as much with my finger as I can. You can see that shimmer shade is just so gorgeous. And again, quite loosely um, pressed. So it is a bit like crumbly, um, but it's worth it without a doubt. As you can see, it's just so much better applied with the fingers, as always, but the nails get in the way. Um, so I'm just going to take the darker pink shimmer and just put that sort of between the red of the outer corner and that shimmery shade there, just to create a bit of like a transition and a bit of depth. That shade is slightly um, harder pressed than the lighter one, so it does make it a little bit easier to pack on with a brush. And then I do think I'm going to deepen up that inner corner, uh, that outer corner, sorry, a little bit more. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of this purple and then a little bit of the red. Just enough purple to deepen it, but not to make it purple purple, if that makes sense. I feel like it's not quite my out. Oh. That is much better. I am just going to go in one last time with, I'm going to go in with the coral shade actually and just make sure that the transition between the coral and the red is nice and blended. As per usual, this eye looks better than this eye. Don't ask me why it happens, it just does. So I'm going to do some graphic liner. This is the Artist Palette from Glisten and Rowie Sing. I'm just going to take a bit of the Scandinavia Makeup Primer Spray. I'm going to take that piece of hair off it. Um, and I'm going to do... I might do the red, actually. I feel like that would look cool. I'm just giving that a little spray and um, I'm going to use this red and purple one here and all I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to run it along this line here so I'm going to shut up while I do it because graphic liner is not the easiest thing to do when at all Okay, that turned out unbelievably well. Um, now I'll see if I can get the other eye to match. I'm not holding my breath. This is where I end up taking my entire makeup look off and doing it again. And breathe. It appears the liner gods are on my side today, which I am not going to complain about, which also makes me want to push them a little bit further. And I'm thinking, do we do some baby pink to go with that red? Mm, no. Do you know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I've decided. Um, so I'm going to take the baby pink in the palette, which is this one here, which is the one that's definitely had the most hammer stuff so far. Um, and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do a line on the outer corner.
Was it too far? Now they don't mind. My KKRS, I flew too close to the sun. We're just gonna take a wipe. We're gonna wipe it off and we're gonna do it again. With all the colour on it that it should have. And did a little bit again. And we go back in. Round number two. Round number two. And look at this one. It doesn't help that my eyes are two different shapes, quite frankly. But that does not help the cause. We've got the bottom line down now. The top line is, is not so good, not so hot. So we're gonna wipe it off and do it again. This is my life with graphic liner. I feel like on Instagram, you just see the cute liner looks and everybody's like, ah, oh, that looks so cool. And I'm like, yeah, it took me 15 attempts. You know, the things we do. Okay, I'm going with that. that. That's as close as we're going to get today. I'm not going to spend 15 million hours doing it. Because quite frankly, I haven't got the patience. Um, so yeah, that's a live input on graphic liner and how it's not as easy as it looks. After all that hubble, I'm going to do something that's easy. I'm going to do skin. So Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which is virtually empty. Why I didn't bring the new one, I do not know, but there we go. I'm very, very, very determined to completely empty this one, which is not so easy when the one doesn't really touch the bottom of the bottle. I've got the elf one with me, but I'm so much. I'd love to know um, if you have tried the flawless filter and the elf one, what you think. I feel like the elf one has a little bit more coverage. Um, and because that's not what I use this product for. I just don't love it. It's also so much darker. This is actually Charlotte Tilbury shade two, whereas the shade one um, with the elf is way too dark for me. So I think for now, I'm sticking with Charlotte. This is where I need to put my fringe up. So foundation wise, I'm going to go in with the Roma Say What Weightless Soft Matte Foundation. This is one of my favourite matte foundations. Now, if you know me in real life, you know I'm not a matte foundation person. Um, but this one I can abide by, um, which is very unlike me. Um, so this is shade Fair Lady T2C. So basically the way they work is they have like five different shade categories and then different levels within those shade categories. The only thing for me, this one is, um, it's great in terms of the like actual depth of the shade. It's just a tiny weeny bit too gray for me. So I do find I need to really bronze it up, but luckily I have quite pinky skin. Um, so it does help sort of contrast the, the slight gray tone to this one. So that is that one. We're going to do Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer, which I can literally never get open. So this is what it looks like inside if you can get inside of it. You might need a friend around to help you in. So I'm just going to dot that about. For some reason, I've had quite a, a few sort of little spots at the moment. Um, so 
I'm just gonna ignore them. They have covered pretty well with the foundation, so I'm just dotting it in the in the usual places. Now I normally never set my foundation, but I am going to do a little bit of setting because we're going out. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation Powder. It does also give you a little bit of coverage. Didn't love this as a foundation powder. Um, it just was a bit too clingy for me on how dry my skin is. Um, but I really quite like it as a setting powder over something that's sort of liquidy and slightly wet. So I'm going to set um, Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray. Just shake it into a oblivion. I am one of those people who quite clearly, as you've just seen, fully drowns myself in setting spray, but I just love it. It just feels so nice. Just give it a quick waft. Um, and then while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna do my lashes. They are the P. Louise Balling on a Budget Lashes. I love P. Louise lashes. Nobody ever talks about them, and I really don't know why, because they are incredible. They're such high quality. Um, and really, really comfortable to wear, even though they've got quite a thick band on them, which makes them easy to apply, but then also comfortable. So, I'm just gonna peel off yesterday's glue. So, don't judge me. Um, I'm gonna tip those in the duo. This is the normal colour, normal sort of transparent, translucent. You know what I mean? The one that dries clear. Um, it's my favourite one. I don't really like the black one. I don't like the one in the tube with the little applicator. Um, I have tried some other lash glues. I tried the tatty one. Don't like that. So I just stick to what I know at this point and it's dual all the way for me. I also don't mind the dose of lashes one, but it's just a case of duos easy to get. Um, however, if you are ordering the dose of lashes one, that one has a little brush that is a little bit easier to sort of deal with. Just gonna curl my eyelashes. These are Tweezerman lash curlers. They are very good. I always thought um, expensive lash curlers were stupid. And then I finally actually bought myself some expensive lash curlers instead of the, I'm pretty sure they were Primark ones I was using. Um, and I was like, oh wow, this does make a difference. So now I use this. Just gonna apply a little bit of mascara. This is just the Maybelline. Lovely. Falsies Lash Left in Ultra Black. Maybe not pull a mascara face. Because I feel like over time my mascara face has got smaller, but it is still there, definitely. Right, we're just going to take these, give them a quick waft, and then stick them on. That went well. Try again. As one, I know some people prefer um, to stick their lashes first in the middle and then on the outer corners. I personally always go outer corner to the middle to the inner corner. I don't know why, I just find it personally easier. And I always see people, um, you know, sort of going, oh, stick it in the middle first, it's super easy. And I'm like, well, I actually think it's easier from the outside first. I just think you can line it up exactly where you want it then. It just makes your life a bit easier. So I'm going to um, 
do my brows now. This is Anastasia Brow Wiz. I've not been wearing brow pants for a lot recently. Um, but I did this the other day and it looked cool. So um, I thought because we're going out, out, that it would be worth giving it a go. So I'm not putting a lot in, nowhere near as much as brow pencil as I used to do. Just a little bit just to fill in any of the gaps. I don't really tend to shape my brows anymore, they're just the way they are. Um one of them grows slightly more arched than the other one and I just I just roll with it, I suppose. Not about that insta brow life anymore, I'm about just just the mean eyebrows. They're just there. They frame the face. They might not be sisters, they might not be twins, but they're definitely long lost cousins. So let's do cream bronzer next. Say Sun Milk Cream Bronzer. I raved about this in my what's it called? Media favourites. Um this is amazing. This is the shade medium. It's just gorgeous. It's just the best. It's my favourite cream bronzer without doubt at the moment. I'm just going to stick all that on near the tops of the cheeks and then pull it down. The bronzer gods have said that's enough bronzer because it just fell on the floor. So I'm going to go in with powder bronzer now. This is the um, Glowish Soft Radiance Bronzer in medium again. It's like a swirly bronzer. Just doing that to set the Sun Milk Bronzer. And I'm just going to take that one around the forehead and down the neck as well. Oh, it itches nose. I really got it. Ah. Right, blush. I've got this. Blush, I've got this gorgeous one from KBD. This is the Modcon Liquid Gel Blush in Duality which is like a corally pink. It matches the um, coral shadow we put on the lids perfectly. So I'm just going to take a stippling brush. I think this is, you see that, and it's Revolution. I always think it's MUA. Um, and I'm just going to stick all this onto the cheeks. It's just the absolute perfect colour for this look. I'm going to pop a little bit on the nose, not too much. Just a little, little, little dot. Right, highlighter. I'm going to go in with Milk and Cookies from Ofra and Steph Toms. I think when all the drama happened with Ofra, Steph pulled this, but... Um, so, if she did, I'm sorry about that, but I really like it, so I thought I'd use it today. It's just a really pretty golden shade. Again, tiny bit on the nose. It also smells really good. It smells like, like milky. It smells delicious. Right, so we are almost done. I'm going to do another layer of setting spray because I can't get enough. And then, ugh, ugh, that did not taste good. Then we're going to do lips. So I'm going to go in with the Artist Colour Pencil in Full Scale Rust from Makeup Forever. This is without my favourite lip primer right now.
that's round the edges of the lips because we're going to go in with something a little lighter. This is Ofra Liquid Lipstick in Sao Paulo, which is gorgeous, really light, dude. So we've just gone with that not quite up to the lip line just so it creates a little bit of like an ombre effect and then I'm going to go in with Dior Lip Maximizer in, I think it's Rosewood, this is so hard to read, um, 012 I'm sure it's called Rosewood and I'm just going to pop this on the middle of the lips. So let me sew my hair out and I'll be back with the final look. So that is it for today's um, Hendu Get Ready With Me. I'm super excited for tonight. Um, let me know down below if you've been to the Bongo's Bingo, how much fun you had. I will probably write a little bit in the um, description box about what we did and what we got up to. So that's it for today, guys. You've been fabulous. I've been Call of the Ball and I'll see you next time. Bye.